and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm sorry? All right. Uh, first order of business is going to be uh, approval of the minutes for October 7th. I have a going there signing this. I mean, even correction? There, a correction? Doing that. Uh, on page 49, it should be. And then I would. Mike uh, Bozeron, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, on page 49, I have a correction. It should be, I don't think he's right. Oh, okay. Terrell, Terrell turns out. Yeah. Anybody else have any other corrections? I might make a motion and admit it's be accepted. With the correction? Yes. One second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, first order of business is Ricky and Mark Ventura, 1 Lane Gate Road. Applicants are seeking an interpretation of Town Code 175 that existing uses on the premises are pre existing legally non conforming use permitted pursuant to the code as well as an appeal of April 23rd, 2019, stop work order issued by the code enforcement officer. Uh, the property is approximately 9.542 acres and situated in the highway commercial zoning, district of the town of Phillipstown. Uh, we got it, it was supposed to be, a decision was supposed to be made tonight on this by the board, but I got a letter Thursday from the, Mr. Ventura's attorney, who is, uh, what's his name here? Good question. Uh, here we go. Oh, Cigarano. Cigarano, okay. Uh, Mr. D, uh, as you know, I am the zoning counsel to Ricky Ventura. Uh, his appeal is pending before your zoning board and is scheduled for further consideration of November 18th, 2019. I will be unable to attend the November 18th meeting and respect the request that my client's appeals be adjourned. Uh, at this point in time, I think that if there's any objection, we'll adjourn the, the uh, decision until the next meeting, which would be January 13th, 2020. We don't meet in December. So we'll put that over until January 13th. Now, this is the third uh, requisition for a change, the change of dates that this uh, gentleman has put in, Mrs. Oriano. So, and we oblige all three, but uh, next month, the decision will be made whether he's able to tender or not. Uh, first on the... Next on the agenda is uh, Lake Surprise. Anybody here representing that application? Yes, sir. We'll step up here. I'm going to recuse myself from this. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Richard. I'm going to recuse myself from this just Okay. Oh, so there'll be four members on this. Not those. Yes, sir. Just explain to us, uh, let's see what tells you what it says here. Uh, microphone. Oh, you got to go hit the microphone. I'm sorry. Because dear, she's uh, filming us. You got to be on TV whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, you're seeking to approval to construct a new two story, 1,973 square accessory garage with guest cottage, which requires a variance of the town code 17510, which limits the size of the garage associated with a single family residence to 1,000 square feet. Property is 50 plus acres located in a rural residential zoning district. Okay. Yeah, so the, the property is huge, and where my client would like to place the. Who are you? I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Tom Patachik, um, the, the, the builder. The builder, okay. And um, basically, the placing of the barn, it's, it's up a half mile long driveway, and it cannot be seen from. Any, anywhere very easily like no 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 neighbors can actually set eyes on it and it's uh, it's bigger than the, the, the 1,000 square feet allowed but we have an approved septic already for that for the, apartment. the apartment and we have um, the roads uh, site plan approved the, the and, a, and a permit for the driveway and we want to build a he wants to build a small cabin separate from this Okay. So, so they're in two locations. Small, small cabin separate? Yeah. yeah You're not they, showing that here, though? Um, th that's, that's on the – it's shown on, on, the, on the plan, on the site plan.
plan. So, <clears throat> so, so the sm small building is for what? I'm sorry. It's I'm, it's I'm a residential it. home. The, the it's it's the house. But you're not coming for us. Before. No, not for that. That's not separate. That. Okay, that's, that's separate. That's, that's separate. Okay. And that's already so uh, you're we have a for permit for, for that. Is for this for these uh, <clears throat> 1,700 whatever square foot yeah. uh, with an apartment. You're going to already, already yeah small uh, guest apartment above. Okay. And um, and you have the septic approved for it. Yes, we do. Okay. <clears throat> I, I look, this first is this for completion. This is for completion. Right. And if we deem right. it complete, then you know it goes to a public hearing. Right. Correct. The only thing, I, 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 for the apartment, uh, I don't see any square footage like for the apartment. Like how big is the apartment going to be? Where the bedroom's going to yeah, be? Yeah. I, um, that's com I have that done. It, it wasn't done at the point of handing this in. Okay. But we, we have it. So it would be uh, a single bedroom, a, a study. The whole top floor, we kind of make a loft uh, right. a, a apartment of it. So the footprint is, is is one bathroom, a kitchen in the corner. But it's an open floor plan except for the two rooms. Okay. See, uh, we don't have that. Right. So, uh, you know. Uh, we, we would have, I, I will have it for, for. All right. If I have it in, bef like, in advance of when that. Uh, January meeting. January meeting. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. it's, gotta be a few it's weeks already to give, done. Give us a time to. Yeah, so to, I could get it in right away. To look at it. Okay. All right. Then, uh, are there any questions? Other questions yeah, before we deem it complete? I one question. Yeah. How many buildings are going to be on this property? Two. Just two. It's 75 acres. Okay. One's a small cabin and a two car garage with and an exit. And the house. Okay. Yeah. And the house. It's, so it'll be no, three buildings on there. No, it's two. It's a small cabin and what I'm calling the. The garage with a guest apartment above the garage. Okay. So it's it's it just happens to be that garage is bigger than the house, the cabin. The garage is bigger than the house. Yeah. yeah. Because he. Well, that, on the apartment, you gotta understand it can't be any bigger than 800 square feet. All right. We we'll we'll make sure that All it's, right, cause, the know, rest it, will be storage then. Right. Okay. The, 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 the square footage right. of the apartment because that's in the because okay. you, you got need variance for the size of the of right. the building, you know, the, yeah. the garage, and you need one for the apartment too, okay, accessory so apartment. We'll, we'll make sure that. But you already got the health permit, so you're good with that. Yeah. But like I say, it's, it can't be any bigger than 800 square okay. feet. Okay. I'll so, make sure so that. So we'll, I guess we could deem it uh, complete. I'll, I'm going to ask for a vote, of course, uh, as long as we have those before the next meeting, which would be. Is there anybody have any questions? Other questions on it, Paula? Um, so the so you'll have all the dimensions on the amended. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the building and on the bedrooms and right. uh, on the the apartment. And the bathroom and everything. Yeah, else and it'll like be that. with yeah. measurements on it, so it's right. clearly on 800 feet. I'm right. Square said feet. 800 square feet. Yeah. Doesn't get no, bigger. no more. Anybody else have any questions? <clears throat> okay. I would just uh, make sure that that's submitted uh, a sufficient time in advance of the meeting, so that the code enforcement officer can look at it um, beforehand. Yes, I would just request that it be submitted a sufficient time before the meeting so our code enforcement officer can look at the plan and, and make sure that um, they're before the board for the, the proper uh, reasons. Okay. And, and I, so you can drop it off to him any time, you, know, yeah. you know, where his office is, right? I do, yes. Okay. And this is a four-car garage? And no, it's a two-car garage with an exercise, uh, extra room downstairs, like a little little extra room for work. Exercise room, why they could set or something yeah. like that. Or, yeah. And then the upstairs is a, the guest apartment. Okay. They get in a house, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's what they want. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> but you have, like, four entrance doors. Yeah. Looks like. All right. Uh, uh, and, and like I say, you drop it off to him, and then we'll have one's upstairs. a couple of weeks beforehand. Uh, I make a motion that this be deemed uh, accepted to complete. I'll make the motion. Can you make the motion? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, if I get that to us, and the next meeting will be January 13th. On okay. Monday. It'll be here. Also. Thank, thank you. Okay. Next order of business is um, uh, Jose Romero, trustee of Jose Romero Irrevocable Trust, 529 Route 9D. Uh, the applicant is seeking interpretation of zoning code 17523A and B as it applies to the building permit number 
2018-12724. Any addition, alterations, and expansion of 529 Route 9D. The property is, is approximately 1.6 acres and located in a rural residential zoning district. You are? Good evening. I'm Luke Hilpert. I'm here on behalf of uh, the trust, and I'm here with Sidney Babcock, one of the trustees, and Jose Romero is also here. Okay. So, exactly what you said. We're here. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to recruit yourself. Do something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. He's, he's working on both houses, so he can't. He can't. No, I, I understood. Go ahead. Not a problem. Um, so yes, we are here seeking a um, seeking an interpretation of the code as it applies to the uh, the building permit that was granted, uh, specifically those two sections and um, how it would also relate to the floor area. Um, what we're looking at here is those. In those sections, specifically, the non-conforming building or structure shall not be enlarged, extended, or structurally altered, except where the enlargement or expansion <clears throat> does not increase the non-conformity. The height of the non-conforming principal building that encroaches in the required front setback may not be increased within the setback. And then, um, notwithstanding the provision of subsection uh, B1 above, the non-conforming use of structure may be enlarged a maximum of 25% of its floor area or impervious surface. And it's, it's specifically those two sections that we're um, interested right. in, the, in this board's interpretation. Well, I, I, I read it, and I, and I read the sections, and uh, my opinion at this point in time is that it should have came before the board before the building permit was issued. I, That's I, my opinion, okay? Uh, I'd have to look into it more, but uh, it, the way it sounds, if it's not, if it's not conforming, Pre-existing, in order to do any additions, you have to come before the board. Uh, we we share that opinion. Now, uh, is any board member? Am I wrong on this, or do you, I agree with you? I agree too. Yeah, me too. Now, the problem we have is, I guess, the building is going on now. The the building is going on, and and there is an ongoing, you know, just for disclosure purposes, there is an ongoing uh, Supreme Court matter. Right. Um, that is, there's appearance on that tomorrow. Um, papers have been submitted on a, an order to show cause that that uh, I brought on behalf of my clients seeking a temporary injunction to uh, to halt the construction. the construction. How are you making out with that? Mm, we'll find out tomorrow. We'll find out tomorrow. But we did, we did have paper submissions. One, you know, the town uh, put in their response today. We were not granted the temporary injunction at the last court appearance. Uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the homeowners have been allowed to continue to build and to um, at least to you know shore up everything for the winter. They did have concerns about that, which the judge uh, agreed were legitimate concerns. Um, our, you know, our main concern here really is as the building progresses, when this application now is before this board, there, we have to look at if this application is now before this, if their application has to come back before this board, there are the five st standards that they have to, uh, you know, that you have to apply, one of which being the self-created harm and, and right. you know, this ongoing construction really, um, we feel that, that because the building permit was issued to them, they, they are relying on a building permit that was issued, even though that building permit is incorrect in our opinion. Um, you know, they, they are continuing and in, in, they were continuing at that time in good faith. Right. Well, it's my understanding, and I guess it's the other, all the board members' understanding, is that they should have come before the board before a building permit was issued. Now, as far as stop and work, I don't know that we have the authority to do that. I believe the board does have the, um, if the board will review this, or if the board is saying that this uh, permit was improperly issued. I believe that a stop work order would be appropriate, and I certainly would, um, you, you know, uh, pass it off to, to Mr. Bird. But I, uh, uh, no, this is uh, you, your job is for the uh, interpretation and enforcement of the, of the village code. And if you believe that this permit was not issued properly, uh, then the construction itself is improper. And um, well, I mean that's. That, that's true. I mean, this is a review for completeness, and we're scheduling it for a public hearing. Understood. Uh, but I think what um, the question was, apparently you, uh, on behalf of your client, you brought a court proceeding that's seeking right. a temporary restraining order and an injunction. And as I understand it from what you said, there's going to be a court appearance tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, on that issue. Yes. Is that personal appearances required? Uh, personal appearances are required. I don't, I, you know, I don't know because uh, the town's reply was submitted this afternoon. 
I don't know that the, the judge will make a decision tomorrow. I believe the judge will hear rather, whether to continue um, with the status quo or to, to be heard more on the injunction. But well, I, uh, that's. Yeah, I understand. It's a, you're in a spot. I, yeah, I could understand. Yeah, that he's in it. Uh, well, the opinion of the board, if you want to understand, I mean, right. that is, that it shouldn't have been issued. Uh, now, can we take a vote that a stop work ought to be issued? Does, does, does the building inspector have to honor that? I don't know. I I, I don't know if it's, like I say, I don't know if it's in our jurisdiction or not. I don't have the code. I mean, I mean we can make I, a request, I guess. I, 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 just so I, I don't think, unless you could point me to a, another section of the zoning code, I mean, in terms of on a review for completeness, where this is not a public hearing, where you already have a pending court proceeding, I mean, what you're ultimately seeking, as I understand it, through your uh, appeal is that this uh, permit was issued erroneously and you're seeking that declaration from the board which is something that the board can do after a public hearing with an opportunity to be heard by both sides. Um, I'm not aware of any authority that empowers the board to issue injunctive relief um, at this stage at a review for completeness, especially when you have <laughs> another action pending that's seeking the exact same relief. No, I, I you know, again, I, I think the board may have authority to limit um, any construction during a um, during a review period, but because this is just a review for the application, I, I you have the code in front of you, and I'm I'm not going to um, submit that that's incorrect. I, I believe that during the review of this you can uh, halt, no work should continue to be completed because you're essentially deciding whether or not this permit was valid and that goes to the core of the issue. Um, you, you know, there, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that because the other arguments are not for this board. That's, well, I guess we could always, uh, I'd say unfortunately, we're not, we don't we didn't meet until January, you know, so we're talking, well, you know, it's too much off. I, 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 I understand the urgency of going to court tomorrow and like that, but uh, I think the board feels that it was issued, all, of all members, if I'm, if I'm right. wrong, tell me, but I think we all feel the same way that it should never have been issued. Right. I don't know what else we can do beyond can that. Can help you? No, I, well, mm -hmm. it's, it certainly does. I, I think that, you know, with that information, and um, I believe that, you know, the applicants and their attorney are here, that certainly is... Um, you know, notice that that the board that to, the board I has an issue. We have to review. We have a public hearing and everything like that. But you know, as far as I'm looking at, this is blatant, well, I, and and uh, you know, it should have never been issued. Right. And okay. I think all board members, all board members, agree with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we yes. have to take a vote on that? So, and I don't know if we can vote on it because we haven't had a public hearing. Uh, we haven't taken both sides. But I can think we vote that it was issued. That's what I'm talking about. That it issued incorrectly. Yes. I'm gonna make a motion. I'll make the motion. That that the building thing was the building uh, incorrectly was issued incorrectly it was issued in error. Yeah, I guess. I, I, my recommendation would be, I mean, this is a review for completeness, and to do it kind of ex parte, without the other side. I'm just not. Well, I understand that too. But I think, in fairness to the other side, we're not going to meet until January. It could probably it could be completed by that time. That's but they you have know. a. They're in court. They're seeking they an injunction. They could get relief tomorrow. They're, they're seeking an injunction. They've already applied to the court for an injunction. Um, so the issue has been teed up for the court. And I would just caution, um, we certainly want to avoid inconsistent uh, results, especially when the app, the, um, proceeding in court is being litigated um, on notice to both sides. Um, and this is just a review for completeness. I, I'm not implying I, that I, I, the, the I, I, board's I, I, conclusion I, I, might not ultimately uh, be right, but uh, I, I'm just uh, concerned uh, about uh, taking a, a vote on a scheduled review for completeness on a matter that's being actively uh, the same relief is now being sought in court. But, yes, and I would just say that 
you know, the relief cannot be granted in, in two venues. If the relief was granted here tonight, it, it would be a different, uh, a different conversation in court tomorrow, certainly. Um, and again, my, my interpretation is that during this review process, the, the board, you, they can determine, I, it's up to the board to determine when the review starts, but if that's, uh, if that's the way they go, I, I, I don't believe it would be um, we incorrect, but that's. We can't discuss this until it's advertised anyway. <coughs> right, well, yeah, but I think you're right. It, while we discuss it, but we can. We could look at fairness, too. There's such a thing. I mean, it is the law, but there's such a thing as being fair, too. I mean, in all honesty, uh, if it's pre-existing, non-conforming, we could sit here and hear 100 people tell us, but it, it's, it's issued illegally. Right, but we can't discuss this and decide on it right. until it's been advertised under, well, under, under law. I don't know what to tell you, okay, at this point in time. I guess we can't vote on it until... Uh, well, you uh, you know, according to our attorney, and I have to go, I have to go, go by his advice. I, I understand that. Okay. Uh, so we'll say it's uh, complete. I, let's make a motion. Anybody make a motion that's a complete? I, I move. Okay. We'll set it for a public hearing for um, January 13th, you know. Yes. But uh, tell the judge how we feel. That's up to you. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I have a moment? Yeah, sure. Interested party respondent, please. Go ahead. You are? My name is Frank J. Smith III from the Law Office of William Schilling in Carmel, and we represent Hill and Valley Properties. Uh, first and foremost, we are on for court tomorrow morning at Putnam Supreme at 9.30. Uh, at this point, I do think it would be imprudent for the, the board to make a decision, especially in light of not having a public hearing. We didn't make a decision. No, and I appreciate that immensely. Thank you. Um, I would also like to, to bring to your attention that the application by the petitioner was untimely. Uh, the town code requires it to be filed within 60 days of the code enforcement officer's decision being filed. Well, before, but, us, before us tonight is whether it is pre-existing non-conforming, from my understanding, unless, I, unless I'm misinterpreted. Let me read it again. I, Interpretation I think, if it's pre-existing non-conforming and that it, a building permit should not have been issued. I don't see any timely thing in here. And from my perspective, oh, perspective. the, the okay, appeal is untimely. The um, appeal is untimely. Okay. Even if we were to concede uh, right. that the petitioner did not realize that the work was being done on the subject property until the end of July, it still didn't meet the 60-day requirement that's necessary in order to file an appeal of a code enforcement officer's decision. You've got to understand one thing. We don't deal with that. Okay, that's a code enforcement officer's regulations, 60 days and so on and so forth. I have no knowledge of that. It's code section 17559F1 that requires that an appeal. 17559F1. F1. He's not asking for appeal, he's asking for an interpretation. And, and this, to my understanding, is the procedure of the board um, in general, yes, whether it's appeals, an appeal. But he's not appealing, he's asking for an interpretation. And I still believe it would fall under that same code uh, section. Um, but regardless of that, even if the board were to find that the application were timely, uh, we would still contend that the code enforcement officer's interpretation was correct. Uh, specifically, if you look at 17523B1, it states nonconforming buildings or other structures shall not be enlarged, extended, or structurally altered except where the enlargement or extension does not increase the nonconformity. In your papers that were submitted by the petitioner, it states that we were only six feet from the property line. In reality, we're 16 feet from the property line. So not only was there a material misrepresentation in that uh, application for an interpretation, also the nonconformity is not being expanded. Excuse me, how, how many feet were you bef before the? Uh... 16. And we're currently 16. And we did not move any closer to the subject property line because in reality what happened was the floor area from the finished basement was removed. That's now an unfinished basement. And that same floor area was added to the existing footprint moving upwards. Now I know that the code provision also speaks to height uh, in non-conforming uses when you're within a setback requirement, but we thoroughly meet the front yard setback requirement. Um, 
I will okay. say I, I was only apprised of this meeting on Friday, and I would much welcome the opportunity to submit written papers uh, supporting sure, our. You could submit all the written papers you want because the next meeting will be January 13th. Yes. Thank you okay. very much, Mr. Chairman. That's when a public hearing will be, and then you'll have your chance to uh, argue your case. Thank okay. you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Yes. Um, my name is Tim Rasick. Um, I'm sorry? Tim Rasick. I'm okay. the owner of 529 9D. Okay. I'm here with my wife and children. Okay. Um, you know, we're full-time garrison residents. I'm mostly the architect. Um, this community is special to us. Um, I have an obligation to uphold the law when I'm a professional. We reviewed the code. Um, basically, Non-conforming buildings or other structures shall not be enlarged, extended, or structurally altered except where the enlargement or extension does not increase the non-conformity. The height of a non-conforming principal building that encroaches in a required front yard setback may not be increased within that setback area. The renovation stays within the existing footprint. It doesn't go out, it goes up. It does not increase the non-conformity. Actually, it does because you're more square footage. Right. That's not conforming. More square footage. Mm -hmm. Height only becomes an issue when encroaching in the. As a height, yard. talk about square footage. Okay. So but we're gonna, I'd probably best to save your argument for the public hearing. Right. Because we're not going to make a decision on anything tonight. Okay, we haven't made a decision. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'll give you a chance to talk. I'm not going to cut you short, but what I'm trying to explain to you is that you could. You know, you could be Abraham Lincoln and make the best speech tonight. We can't make a decision. Understood, but okay. I would like to have right. a chance sure, to speak. Sure, go ahead. So, the other issue is the renovation doesn't increase the floor area of the, ha the house as the habitable floor area from the basement level is transferred to the second level. So, the definition of floor area is per 175.74. Floor area is the sum of all habitable or commercial usable space on all floors of a structure, including the interior floor area of all rooms, including bathrooms and kitchens, closets, pantries, hallways that are part of a dwelling unit um, and inside a commercial building, including habitable finished basements, but excluding cellars or unfinished basements. So we're not increasing the floor area in our renovation. You, okay. you currently have a habitable fin finished basement? Yes. That's that was that, that was in the house when we purchased it. Okay. Okay. So I'll save right. the rest for later, I guess. All right, save the rest for later. You're right. And we do have copies of Mr. Rasick's letter and sure. also of the uh, partial survey. Bring it all with you in follow. January. Bring it all with you in January with one or, of them. Or, or submit it beforehand. Okay. To, and uh, this way we'll have it to read in January. Okay. Uh, we can take it now if he has it. No, I don't take it now. You don't want to? No, submit it to the, to the, to the uh, town court because everybody will be and put we'll papers. we'll submit to the building department accordingly. Okay. Correct. Thank yes, you, Mr. Chairman. the paperwork before January's meeting. You'll have it well in advance. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anybody else? Um, yes. Speak sure. Go, go ahead. Okay. We'll go ahead. I was going to say this, you? but I'm Sidney Babcock. Okay, Mr. Babcock. And, uh, for, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to address you at this moment. Uh, 525 Route 9D has been our home for the last 38 years. You're next door to this house? Right, next door, yes. Okay. Carol and Joe Riss were our neighbors for the most of those years. Uh, they were wonderful neighbors. They had our keys. We were looked out for each other. And indeed, we shared the joys and sorrows of each other's lives over the years. They lived in a single-story rectangular cottage, which, ho which Joe built mostly by himself in the early 1960s and therefore pre-code. The living space was limited to the ground floor. When we purchased our home in 1981, it was with the full knowledge that their home was non-conforming by the code at that time. At one point, he added a terrace and consulted with us to make sure that it was not impinging on the current allowable setback. Some time ago, the house was sold. We were looking forward to meeting our new neighbors. I went over to introduce myself, offer my help, and gave them my contact information. We never heard from them again until this evening. In early July of this year, we heard demolition within the house. Soon thereafter, there was external demolition. When the roof came off, we became concerned about the potential scale of the project. Whereupon, on July 12th, we visited the buildings department in order to find out what was happening. Well, As, sorry, when did you go to the building department? July 12th. 
When would the building start? In July? That week. And you went they, to the building They, they started right Monday, away. we went on Friday. With Okay. Uh, okay, all right. Wait, he, wait, let me change the talk. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We heard demolition within the house. Soon thereafter, there was an external demolition. When the roof came off, we became concerned about the potential scale of the project. Whereupon, on July 12th, we visited the building department in order to find out what was happening, as we had not been notified of any new construction. They were shorthanded, so we were asked by Tara to return the following Monday, July 15th. And then we spent the weekend scrutinizing the zoning code, specifically in regard to building expansions on a previously non-conforming home. And finally, looking at the plans, it struck us that the building plans did not follow the regulations, specifically this regulation. I know you're aware of it, but please forgive me if I read it. It's the general legislation of the town of Phillipstown, New York, part two, article six, under paragraph 175.23, general non-conforming use, subsection B2, quote, a non-conforming use or structure may be enlarged by a maximum 25% of its floor area or impervious surface, whichever is less, by the grant of a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals, end of quote. As we understand it, that means that even if a permit is obtained from the Zoning Board of Appeals, the expansion cannot exceed the area of the original footprint of the house by more than 25%. The new structures are approximately 15 or 16 feet from the property line. They also increase the living spaces by about 200% as we see it. When you consider the new living areas, that is the second story, the new basement, which is according to the current plan's added living space area, and a third story called an attic, in this case actually an expansion of a living area. No permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is required by the regulation, was issued. None of this was brought to the ZBA for permission in accordance with the regulation, nor were we or any other neighbors, as far as we know, notified of any building proposal to initiate such a procedure with the zoning board. At that point on July 15th, we were told by the buildings department that there was no such regulation, as I quoted above, and would we please email the chapter and verse of the regulation we were quoting. We were also informed that the buildings department had wide latitude in enforcement and interpretation of any codes and Who tend you with that? Mr. Winner. Mr. Who? Warner. The building Warner. inspector. Yes. Okay. And we were also told that the building's department tends to side with the builder. We were not aware that this was an issue where sides were to be that? taken. Mr. Warner. Okay. We were not aware that this was an issue where sides were to be taken. Our email of July 15th to the building's department, Mr. Warner, with the, with the appropriate section of the code as requested by Mr. Wunner remained unanswered, at which point we emailed you, the chair, and members of the zoning board. A subsequent email from the buildings department did not address the regulation I quoted above at all. These are our concerns and in our layperson's understanding form the basis of our petition. One, the added new second floor of the current structure is about 15 feet from the property line. It also increases the living area by much more than the allowable 25%, even if a permit had been requested and issued. A permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals has to this day not been requested, much less issued. The new second floor increases the living space area by at least 100%. This is clearly delineated in the plans. Two, the basement is no longer a basement. It is heated, it has windows and wide, tall glazed doors opening to a large glazed or screened porch. This does not appear to meet the definition of an unfinished basement. It is clear that this basement is not a basement. Rather, it is added living space and all this is clearly shown in the plans. And number three, the attic does not appear to be an attic. It is in fact lofted spaces connected by individual staircases to the corresponding bedroom below. There is no floor or ceiling separation between the bedrooms below and the lofted areas above. The attic is, in fact, yet another living space area, again, not following the B2 regulation I quoted above. Again, all of this is clearly delineated in the plans. Four, when you add up the areas of the newly created living spaces, they far and away exceed by several orders of magnitude the allowed 25%. 
Five, it bears emphasizing that a permit to allow 25% expansion was never requested of the ZBA nor granted by the ZBA as mandated by the code. Six, all of these newly created living areas are approximately 15 feet from the property line. Again, all of this is clear from the plans. It has been argued that what has happened is a transposition of the previous unfinished non-compliant basement into a second story. I ask how can you transpose a previous non-living space, non-conforming space, the risk basement, and call it a conforming second story? At the very least, by itself, this markedly expands the living area, floor area, well beyond the maximum allowed by the code stated above. The fact remains that the overall floor area increase for the entire project now far exceeds the maximum 25% allowed by the code if approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. I must add that we made four visits to the building department in an attempt to find a solution to this issue, and each time we were denied permission to file a petition with this board. First was July. Who, yes. Who, who denied you permission to file a petition? And what were the dates that you uh, visited the? To tell you. Uh, okay. July 12th. Right, sure. Shortly okay. after we noticed the start of the construction. July 15th, when we were informed that such regulation, that is B2, did not exist and that there was no reason to ask the ZBA for an opinion. July 29th, when we were again requested to see the plans, they were not made available to us and neither was the paperwork to petition the ZBA. I was informed the Buildings Department was retaining counsel. But on August 12th, we then retained a lawyer, Luke Hilpert. Luke Hilpert, Jose Romeo, and I scheduled an appointment with the Code Enforcement Officer, Mr. Wunner. At the appointed time, he excluded us, refused to meet with us, and met behind closed doors with Luke. Again, petition forms for an appeal to the ZBA were denied. In July, we personally spoke with Nancy Montgomery and Richard Shea about this issue, and once more with Richard Shea in October. In summary, the building project does not have the required permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. To ignore the ZBA requirement establishes a dangerous precedent for all future construction in our community. Number two, it is in essence a three and a half story building about 15 feet from the property line. Three, of course, it devalues our own property. Four, imagine if this happened next door to you, particularly as a result of not following the clear zoning regulations. Please go on site and see for yourself our concerns. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Uh, over there, please. <clears throat> How, the zoning officer said that you couldn't come before us? Is that what he said? We were denied applications. Denied the application yes. to come before us. Okay. On more than one occasion. On more than one occasion. A citizen he, can always come to the zoning board, even if they're not scheduled, if they have an issue. We did not know that. I mean, I, have, I actually did uh, email. All right. We don't All right, know who you have to come up. Talking about. Let, let him finish. Right, let him finish. We, we, we right. did well, make a number of emails. Do you know, yes, do you know what the sideline is in that area? What I mean, is it 30 feet or do you know? What do you mean? 30 feet. 30 feet. How much is it? 30, 30 feet. feet. That's what I figured. 30 feet. Okay. All right. I'm sorry that you were denied to come before us, but you, you, any citizen is welcome to come before us at any time and ask us a question. Uh, we did email several times and... That was not, information was not um, clearly presented to us, so that was our mistake. Okay. Right. Yes, Sue. Exactly. That's it? All right, anybody else for right now? Okay, like I said, there's going to be a public hearing <coughs> um, on uh, January 13th, so everybody will get their chance to, uh, you know, uh, give their opinion and uh, then the board make a decision. But I guess you're going to the court tomorrow for a stop work order or something like that. So. I have a question. Sure. Who interprets the code? The code enforcement officer or the ZBA? No, they don't we don't interpret the enforce the code. We interpret the code. Yes. We and interpret if he's unsure, code. I mean, he's I supposed could, to. I think the code enforcement officer interpret the code. He's not supposed to. We do. Uh, well, just to answer the question, the code enforcement officer can interpret uh, the code, but that could be appealed to us, which is what they're he doing. He can now. interpret the zoning code? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, ambiguities in the zoning code, the code enforcement officer in the first instance. Okay. Good now? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, just uh, uh, this board can review 
uh, and it expressly indicates in the code determinations of the code enforcement officer, and that includes orders, requirements, decisions, interpretations, or determinations. So that's what we're here. We're an appellate uh, administrative body that reviews uh, those items from the code enforcement officer. Right. But if the, if, if, if the, if the building permit was issued in error, we can... Right. That, we, we, well, can, we, about we, we can say it was issued right. in error, or we right. can say the interpretation was incorrect. Right. Um, okay, that's uh, why they're appealing to us. I think, I think at this point in time, it probably maybe if, if you would notify the uh, code enforcement office that we request his appearance before the board January 13th. Could you notify him that, please? Sure. Because I think he should be here to explain uh, his reasoning. I had a question. Yes, just stand up. You have to get, you have to get up here and, and identify yourself. Joan Turner and I live in Garrison. Um, I'm dealing with another issue about uh, nonconforming, and as other board members know, it's one of my pet uh, research um, issues. Um, the zoning board, I want to remind you, is the only agency that has the legal mandate, as you said, to uh, interpret the code. The building department, the code enforcement officer, does not. And to use, maybe it's a semantic argument about decision-making, judgment, or interpretation. He makes a judgment, not an interpretation. That is the sole responsibility of this board. And I just want you to be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We were on the zoning board before, weren't you? Or oh, a lot of years. Yeah. A lot of years ago, right? Yeah, a long time. Yeah. A long time. <laughs> Thank you. Board member. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, like I say, we're going to have the meeting the 13th, I, you know, you, maybe you're going on how you're going to go in court, but you're just going for a stop work order, right? Is that what you're appealing for? I mean, yeah, or, that's, that's part of the request. Part of the request, okay. Uh, but I said we requested the uh, code enforcement office appear before us on the 13th, okay, so I'll be part of that. Uh, there's no other issues at this point in time, any other new business or old business? I get motion? I'll make a motion. To adjourn? Second. All in second, all in favor? Meeting's right. adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.